if you know. Is it, what what are two questions? One, an aspiring writer or an established writer that wants to get into television. Um, uh, what? How do they? How do they get involved? How do they get involved? Uh, and then the other question is, actually, no. Let's just start there because okay. otherwise I'll so start a tangent. It's it's uh, exceedingly challenging, but I think that writers who have great talent will get recognized. And you start as a staff writer. Sometimes you start as a writer's assistant and then get a script assignment as a writer's assistant, a freelance script if they like you. That will then prove yourself and then you get hired the following season as a staff writer. And you start in the bottom and you work your way up. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's unlike film where a no-name writer can write a brilliant script and sell it. Mm -hmm. It's very challenging as a um, unproven talent in television to sell a television show and even if you do the network and the studio are going to give you a showrunner an experienced person who's going to take over the show so then and the studio hopefully the relationship is such that the creator who has no experience and the showrunner who's going to run the show can work together and that the showrunner will help execute the creator's vision mm -hmm. but the truth is at the end of the day the studio is going to look to the showrunner because at the end of the day, that's the person who's going to protect their investment. They're going to invest a lot of money in this project. They don't want to invest thirty million dollars in somebody who's never done this. Someone who's never done this before. Right, because they haven't proven that they can. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so, what are uh, the other question? What are best practices for uh, the advice you can give to to writers in your experience? Um, well, I mean, obviously, keep do's writing. Do's and don'ts. Uh, don't write a show. Um, do write both specs and originals. A spec is a an original episode of a television series that's on the air. So, like, if you love Hawaii Five O, you should write a spec Hawaii Five O. Um, if you love Modern Family, write a spec Modern Family. What you should never do is do something to the main characters that is that is um, monumentally changing the course of uh, of the show. So don't kill off a main character. Don't get somebody married. Don't give them a pregnancy. Like it's just a cheat. It's it it proves that you you need a device to show something really cool and sassy. Um, when showrunners and studio executives and network executives read spec scripts, they want to see that you can write somebody else's voice, which is why a lot of showrunners these days want to read original samples because they want to see what your voice is. Mm. But still people like to read specs because they want to also be able to see that you're able to write in somebody else's voice. Um, a lot of playwrights uh, have been um, breaking in television with really smart plays that show really wonderful and and deep characters mm -hmm. because at the end of the day television is a medium of character mm -hmm. um i think film is a little bit more plot driven it's more about the beginning middle and end of what's your what's your one sheet on the mm -hmm. you know the movie poster um whereas television is more about who are these characters that i'm going to welcome into my living room week after week after week and so for writers, just keep writing. Always write. Write, write, write. Write original stuff. Um, if, you, if you haven't written something original in six months, then sit down and write something else that's original. Um, it can be a feature. It can be a play. It can be a short story. But absolutely have a television sample. If you want to write something else to show a different side, that's great too. But always have a television sample. Now, is there a bias? We have a question. Is there a bias? Um, um uh, between uh, network and cable uh, as far as uh, writing specs is concerned? No, not at all. Not at all? Not at all. Well, look, I think that the truth is you're not going to get a job on Breaking Bad with a CSI spec, but that's because they're two different styles of shows. Um, CSI is a procedural, and Breaking Bad is a serialized drama. So mm. um, you also have to write the type of show that, is in line with what you want to write. Now, if you want to write a lot of different things, you can have a Raising Hope spec for comedy, you can have a CSI spec for procedural, you can have a Breaking Bad spec for um, serialized drama. You can be able to show that you can write different things. Um, but don't 
you know, years ago I read this, um, it was an attempt at being cheeky and they tried to merge two shows and they were going to be really funny and they were going to do the one episode that was like the crossover episode. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. No. It's, 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 it just feels like a cheat. It feels like you're not, you know, it, it's interesting to grab somebody's attention. Okay. It's funny. Everyone talks about, you know, the, um, what was it? It was like 10 or 15 years ago. I read a Sopranos sex in the city crossover episode. <laughs> Couldn't tell you who wrote it, but if I remembered, it would be a negative thing because it wasn't very good. Right. And the problem is they're two wildly different shows. What makes good television? Character. Character. Um, just good, interesting characters that are compelling or no, funny. You're, co you're or constantly reading scripts. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the scripts that jump off the page are the ones where the characters are actually speaking to you as you're reading them? Or is it, uh, do you look at them with from different perspectives? Well, you know, for different shows, I, I mean, the, the shows that I'm covering now are so, each one is so different from the next, which is why I find it very interesting. But um, I think that the characters, it's not that it speaks to me per se, but that it has something to say. Mm -hmm. Um I keep going back to Breaking Bad because I just love that show. Yeah, so do I. I, I, mean, I, I did not work on it. It do. is a Sony show. I did not work on it. I love the show. Uh, I always used to say to my colleague who did cover the show, don't tell me what happened. I don't want to know what happened. I'm going to watch it. Um, you know, Downton Abbey. Okay. I, 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 for those people who are not up to date, I will not, no spoiler alerts. Okay. Um, it's, they're such wonderful characters and it's such an interesting show. It's different. It's, it's, it's 1800s and it's fresh. It's 1900s now, I guess. It's 1920s, I mm -hmm. think, is what they're up to. And, uh, and it's such an interesting time in the world. And the whole women's lib issue is just starting up. It's now post-World War I, pre-World War II. The world is changing. And, and so it's really interesting how the characters and the stories that they're creating are still relatable to today's society. You know, I've watched two episodes of Doubt now, I, Abby, and I know that I want, I'm interested and I want to continue to watch it. Um, but it's it, to me, it's, it's amazing how all of a sudden the show you really wouldn't think would take off has a just huge like... A hit. Runaway right, hit. Runaway hit, yeah. Uh, like, I can't watch... I, I never got into Mad Men yeah. because I watched the first couple of episodes and I would just scream at the television set because I was so angry at how the women were treated. Right, the misogyny. And that I couldn't watch it. I couldn't watch a show. Yeah. So I never got into it. But I mean, it's good that they did that. But that by the way, it's a brilliant show. I mean, Matt I Weiner absolutely did recognize that. how brilliant the show is. I just never got into it. But the other problem with being a television executive is that I read so much and I watch so much TV, I don't have time to watch TV. That makes sense. I mean, I, I there's so little that I've seen this season. I haven't really had a chance to sample the new shows. Um, because I've just been so crazy busy. But with On Demand, I've, I'm lying in bed on a Saturday afternoon, like chilling out on yeah. demand. Let's see what's on. Uh, as soon as we get this back up and running, um, I want to talk a little bit about the television director aspect of the job and then some maybe talk about, um, and then I'd like to talk about what Netflix is doing with House of Cards. know what they're doing. With House of Cards. But they they produced an entire season and released it at once. Mm -hmm. I don't know a lot about their model. Mm, it's not necessarily modeling, but just how it is that the internet is now becoming a player. In a sense, right? Yeah. Well, but then also I'm working on a show with DirecTV. There you've got a broadcast. It's it's like a cable provider that's becoming, you know, because they've got the audience network. If you have DirecTV, you get the audience network. And if you get the audience network, then you can get these channels, these shows. But if you don't get DirecTV, Wait, you can't I, get the shows. I, I, I just I lost that. What do you mean? The uh, so DirecTV, it's like Time Warner Cable. Yeah. Right? Or, or AT&T Uverse. Right. So DirecTV has a channel on DirecTV sure. called the Audience Network. Okay. They're doing original programming. Yeah. I'm doing a show for DirecTV. Okay. So if, if I'm at home on Time Warner Cable, I can't watch the show because I don't have DirecTV. So is that the direction this is going in? That now Time yeah. Warner and DirecTV are going to start <laughs> carving out pieces of the market so that it's just two companies? Well, D 
direct TV, the, the shows will become available in a year's time on home video. Okay. And so then Netflix all of a sudden will take it over and you can distribute it through Netflix and iTunes. Right. I mean, is, is there a part of the job which is keeping track of all of the distribution platforms that are opening up? That's not up? my job. No. Yes, there is someone who does that, but right. that's not me. I'm creative. There's a salesperson who's responsible for doing all that. 